When putting together this program, we of course started with the concept of the instrumentation, flute, cello, piano. Uh, this is not an unusual combination because the flute in a way replaces the, the voice of the violin, so it's a classic piano trio with, with a twist for the flute. Um, there are a number of uh, original works for this combination, which is beautiful because the, the flute has this very singing quality, higher instrument, and the cello, of course, is the wise, lower instrument, and the piano is the, the one that envelops all of us. Um, and uh, it's also very interesting, the combination, because the, the way of making music with the flute is through the air, with the breath. The, the cello is a string instrument, and in the piano is a completely different uh, uh, kind of way of producing uh, music. So having these three very diverse um, approaches to the same thing is, is really makes, a, I think, a very interesting uh, combination. And uh, we, we were drawn to right away to Haydn because there are a number of Haydn trios specifically written for this very combination. And they're very witty, very beautiful. Um, very intelligent, very classical, uh, very elegant, and so that just was a natural starting point. Um, I was uh, very drawn also to including the Mendelssohn D minor trio because this is a, until recently only a, a thought of as a very famous D minor piano trio for violin, cello, and piano. But in fact, during uh, Mendelssohn's lifetime, he himself was urged by his publisher to make a transcription for flute, and we now know that this exists with his transcription. So it is not uh, my transcription, it's really Mendelssohn himself having written the work for originally for violin and cello and piano, and saying, okay, now this is going to be a version for flute. It's of course challenging as a piece in, in of itself for any trio, but for the flute to step into the role and the kind of alacrity and uh, virtuosity uh, and lightness in a way that the, that the violin can have is, is a very, uh, it's meaningful and it, it even keeps you on your toes. But of course, to have the opportunity to play such a beautiful piece is worth all the extra hard work that I have to do. And these are the two pieces that frame the concert. And in between, we wanted to highlight both the cello and the flute with a piano in individual settings. So the Beethoven sonata for, uh, for cello, of course, is, is a fantastic work, and the Prokofiev uh, sonata is another fantastic work. I would say that Haydn, Beethoven, and Mendelssohn follow one particular thread, but the thing is that Prokofiev, as a neoclassicist, really works in that milieu as well. A little bit later than the other ones, it was written in 1943, uh, but it, it has such roots in, in classicism and it is such an incredible, unique work for the flute, which was then later transcribed by Prokofiev for violin. So there's almost a kind of a sense of irony that the composers are transcribing these pieces between flute and, and violin and we are collecting them in, into the same program. So this is, um, I think, a very, a very well-rounded uh, program that follows through a, a pathway with some unique connections and just really four fantastic pieces of music, pieces of chamber music, and uh, examples of instrumental uh, virtuosity. I think that every collaboration uh, presents unique uh, opportunities uh, and for me to work with, with strings is different than working with winds, uh, working with a piano is different than working with a harpsichord, say, or a harp, um, uh, or the voice. And so this, this combination of the three players is, is in itself very unique, but it's a very beautiful and very natural one. The fact that we are playing instruments that produce the sound, that approach um, the way that we, we make phrasing in, in different ways, the nature of the airstream, the nature of the bow, the nature of the 
the keyboard, it, it gives a kind of, um, I think, a, a, it opens up a world. I think it opens up more possibilities and we can be inspired by each other. Uh, so it is, it is really beautiful in that way. And the fact that the, the cello is, has such a deeper range than the flute also inspires me to have a, a warmer kind of timbre that I might have to have with another instrument. And I think it's, it's the... I wouldn't think of anything as a challenge. I think of everything as, a, as an opportunity and um, a, a stimulating uh, way of exploring new sounds, new possibilities, letting our imaginations grow. I'm really excited for this concert. As a musician, um, we travel so much and we almost never have the opportunity to do anything but see our hotel rooms and the backstage of the concert hall and then the hall itself from the stage. Sometimes we see a few restaurants very late in the evening, but sightseeing is not really something that we can do and it's, it's just a part of our lives. And, in the last few years, uh, just before COVID, very fortuitously, uh, my family, um, we were able to uh, build a little chalet in the Swiss Alps, in the center of Switzerland, in Uri, which is the birthplace of William Tell. And to me, this is my favorite place to go to now, whenever I can. It's very high up in the Alps, it's an oasis, it's ours, uh, it's beautiful in the summer with the long grass and the cows are literally outside my balcony grazing. Um, in the winter it's phenomenal with the snow and, and skiing and snowshoeing. It's, uh, it's a peaceful, remote, beautiful place that is healthy. We are all so happy there, and so I have to say that the Bilchinzig in Uri is my favorite destination. I come from a somewhat unusual background, I think, in that my, my parents are actually scientists. Um, and most people think that my uh, my father was a diplomat because already from a very young age I started moving around, living in, in South America, Europe, Canada, United States. Um, and I think for me this has always just been very natural. My, my musical studies were quite the same. I, I uh, began my studies in, in Canada um, and then uh, and I studied at the Juilliard School in New York, but at the same time I was already um, spending my summers in Europe uh, studying with Aurel Nicolet. So my own flute teachers and mentors have been both American and European. And I lived for many, many years in New York and uh, already now have for a very long time moved and lived in Vienna where our daughter grew up. So I've always had a foot in both Europe and America and to some extent in South America. So my, my mother was Brazilian and my family is also there. And I think uh, having this kind of global um, experience uh, and input, consistent input, uh, of course changes you. You see the world as both large and small. You can see um, nationalistic trends as both uh, natural and uh, meaningful and not meaningful. People are the same all over the world with slightly different um, twists and our human experience, our, our, our human uh, view of the world is can be reduced to the same element and I think musically it's also the same. We, we might approach things in a different way but ultimately our goals, I think, uh, our philosophical um, uh, approaches and our philosophical questions, our existential questions, they all end up being the same. And I, I find music, art, life, all of it uh, quite the same. So I, I think in some ways I, I, it's harder for me to, to fit into one identity and one 
stylistic group. Uh, when I am in Europe, I feel my my American uh, years very strongly. When I'm in America, I really feel like a European. When I'm in Brazil, uh, which I am less, I certainly feel anything but South American. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's a um, <laughs> it both displaces you and allows you to be at home in many different ways. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me. I have here several instruments, uh, two of which are mine, and I, I play two different kinds of flutes, um, two different makes of flutes, I should say. I play on a Brandon, Brothers uh, flute with a uh, Lafin head joint, and I also play on a Haynes flute. Both Brandon and Haynes are uh, based in Boston. Most of the great flute makers of the world, especially the, the American ones, are based in, in Boston, and they all began with um, William S. Haynes Flute Company. And from there, there were throughout the years, there were um, offshoots from that and people started their own. Um, I have played on both of these flutes for, for many number of years. My Brandon flute is a complete 14 carat uh, rose gold flute with a La Fan head joint, which is a um, platinum head joint and uh, with a lot of heavy gold 14 carat bands. Uh, it's very unique. La Femme made this. He is from Germany and he made this very specifically for me. Nobody else seems to have so much of these heavy bands, but he thought it was the right thing for me. And the flute, as you can see, is completely, everything is 14 karat gold. The, the mechanism, actually even inside the pads, the, 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 the plates that hold the pads in, in place are also 14 karat gold, which is very unusual. It's a, it's a gorgeous instrument and I, I love it so much. It, I forget uh, where I stop and the flute begins and to me that's the, the magical uh, fluidity that one wants to have with an instrument. After all, it's an instrument, it's just a means to an end. So I love this flute that it feels like it is my voice and <clears throat> I can just melt with it. And my other flute that I play on a lot is uh, the William S. Haynes. This is a white gold flute with rose gold mechanism, so it's a little bit different. And the white gold is a little bit more, <coughs> perhaps a little bit more mysterious, a little bit more elusive, mercurial. It has a very different kind of quality. It's almost like it's the moon and the, the Brandon is more the sun. So it just depends on the repertoire and the combination which flute I'm going to play. But I'm always trying new instruments, <coughs> and I have several coming this, this week as well. Um, flute makers are so wonderful, they're, they're amazing craftsmen who can turn this, this liquid metal into uh, a living organism. And I think uh, in the end though, my, my feeling about instruments is exactly that, that in the end it is it is important and yet it is just a means to an end. The instrument is you and that's how it should always be.